this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. back to New Music Saturday Part 2 with Matt Anderson and our special guest Steven. Eric had to leave, but we still have Steven on for a few more minutes here. So, uh, just before we get into the fifth song on the EP, uh, Steven, now with uh, the creation of some of the songs you guys have done, has the process been relatively easy? Like, no, you haven't had, have you had any like, really kind of butting heads at all, or has it been pretty simple? It's been, like I said, with such a, an old seasoned friendship at the core of everything we do it, it's been phenomenally easy as I, <laughs> as I as i would recollect on it i mean uh the fact that the the bulk of the writing you know minus maybe some of the arrangements and and some minor tweaks and stuff like that it's just been between eric and i right um and we've had a couple of different bass players along along the road um the bassist that you're on that recording is a good friend uh eric another Eric, Eric Leibniz. And uh, most recently we've been playing with uh, another friend, uh, Kel, Kelvin Liu. And he's been a great uh, replacement and filled in really well. And he brought a lot of actually interesting stuff to the table as we started going back into the live circuit again. And the songs actually developed a, a great deal. But as, as far as like to digress, to go back to the, just the writing has been remarkably easy. Maybe because we just decided to keep it simple and you know we write, write to our strengths, I feel. Eric's, Eric's a great drummer, so we write a lot of stuff that centers around drums. Well, right on. Well, that, well fair enough. That's a good. That's a good deal. Catherine Nolan. Hi, Nolan. Um, you guys are based in Toronto, correct? Correct. And and you don't play any covers. I'm I'm gathering that there's a pretty strong support for local music there. There's a huge music scene here. It's kind of a, it's it's funny. It's a bit of a I, I don't know. It's it's a little bit ironic. There's a million venues in the city, yet it's somehow hard to really get gigs. Whoa! <laughs> we, there, jump through hoops here. Um, I, I don't want to step on any toes if there are any uh, ah. clusters of, of live music venues in Toronto that happen to be listening. But uh, <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. I mean, there's a lot of bands and a, and a big scene. And I've actually there's precedent for bands based in Toronto 
to pull pegs and and center themselves somewhere else. Like a lot of people are pulling out of Toronto and uh, centering themselves out of neighboring cities like uh, like Hamilton, Ajax. Exactly, Ajax. Just because there's that slightly smaller scene and it's a little bit easier to get, I guess, notoriety and sort of uh, separate yourself. Do they have pay to play there? In Toronto? Say again. Do they uh, have? A pay to play. I've I've heard rumors and rumblings of it, but it's really more. They kind of make you jump through hoops, and that uh, they want to know what your social following is. Like a lot of them will ask for your YouTube link or uh, or how many likes on your Facebook page, that right. kind of thing, because right. they're trying to cover themselves and make sure that they're going to get enough bar sales or or enough uh, tickets at the door, more or less, to to make it worth their while. Got it. You know, and fair enough, uh, Stephen, because uh, there's a a few bands I listen to from the Toronto area, call, uh, a few called uh, Convoys, The Nursery. Yeah, and, Convoys, awesome. And you know, and it's the same thing with them. They they played a lot of big shows down there, but it's kind of hard to get gigs at the same time. And there's a local London band called uh, Gypsy Ghost who who have played uh, the Horseshoe Tavern a, a bunch of times. Yeah, big shout out to the Horseshoe Tavern, one of Toronto's oldest and finest institutions, and. They are fantastic. Anyone is anyone who is willing to play a club size show. Like you could be huge, you could be Coldplay and decide to play Toronto, and they might come and play the Horseshoe. The Stones will play there, like crazy, crazy bands. Oh, they, they, and they still host free nights Monday and Tuesday, where they'll let basically anybody onto their stage. Well, and you know, and you know what? Awesome. Speaking of the Stones, there, Stephen, they actually did one of their first um, pretty much unannounced shows at the Horseshoe Tavern. Right. So you know it's it's a it's a big venue, and I understand uh, the 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 need and want to get gigs there because of uh, a lot of bands I know that who are out of Toronto but uh, have have based themselves out of other cities and I play other cities because it's been more lucrative and uh, been more uh, there's been more demand as opposed in Toronto because it's sometimes you know it, it's it's like a, it's a kind of give and take you know it's like it's in Toronto uh, for, for as far as venues go because like. I, I've been to a bunch of shows down there, and uh, just in general, you know, it, it's hard to kind of kind of pick and choose what you go to see and what they'll be playing and what they'll uh, uh, put up as a, as a band for the show. Yeah, you know, and I, I gotta sympathize with the owners as well. It's it's exorbitantly expensive to operate anything in, in this city. I mean, real estate goes up all the time. Right. Uh, liquor license costs go up all the time. Cost of liquor, cost of food, everything. So I understand. You know, like anything, it's a business, and you you love to have that organic kumbaya kind of feel that you know it's just a stage and an artist got to be artist and all that kind of stuff. But right. unfortunately, the you know the business creeps into everything these days. So I don't, I'm not trying to say you know no, fair enough. It's a it's it's not a perfect system, but you, you got to kind of live with what you get. And we've been fortunate enough to play some amazing, amazing stages and uh, and had great reception from our fans and and made some new ones along the way. So it's it's been nothing but a positive experience for us. All right, Catherine Nolan. No, actually, not much to add here. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, we we haven't gigged that much. It is really difficult in Seattle when you say yeah. to get the gigs, and I think we talked about this on air yes. once before. It just um, bands here will tend to stack up. In other words, they'll go in and play a half hour set, and there'll be like what five six bands a night, yep. and so they just go in play for a half hour and they're out of there. So it's, I can't even imagine playing under those circumstances, honestly. It's just, so I don't know if that's what's going on up there, but yeah. it's pretty common. It's pretty common down here. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Eh? Like people just think Seattle is such a hotbed for music. And I mean, obviously the history. Oh yeah. It's come from your uh, corner of the country, but uh, yeah, it's whatever, you know, if it, if it I won't say it's been a, Oh, I want to choose my words wisely. It's, 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 I don't want to say it's been easy, but it's been it's been a pleasure the whole way along. It's been a lot of fun, and any roadblocks that we've had have been, uh, you know, minimal in the grand scheme of things. And it's we've we've gotten our fair opportunities to play a lot of great state as a well, we're on. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. So we're gonna. Get- Get into song five of this compilation. This one's by Second Player Score. This song's called Sad and Glamorous. Dig this.
second player score, and that was sad and glamorous. Now, that was a rocking tune and a half. Uh, the vocals were really good and really kind of true to the song, like, meaning they were very, like, kind of hard rock and kind of, like, really just <clears throat> follow the good flow as well. Yeah, that, that tune caught me off guard when I um, first listened to the compilation because it starts out very in a very sort of ginger, melodic kind of way, 